a very friendly town. Very good place to live, and I like it. Well, uh, I think we really have everything here. Most of everything we need, and I like it in Paley. It's a small town, a friendly town, and um, I think we're all happy together here. The Bailey people have a big heart. You're never too far away to be thought of. Well, I was brought up on O'Neill Street, and I've been on O'Neill Street 87 years, and I've enjoyed every bit of it, because I love Bailey. Why? Because it's a little town, you didn't have a whole lot of junk going on. is celebrating its 100-year anniversary. Join them as they remember the people and events that have shaped their community today. The township was formed in 1860 when William Joseph Bailey was given a grant of 640 acres, two miles from the present town. Bailey was incorporated as a town in 1908. This was due in part to the Norfolk Southern Railroad having laid tracks through the township in 1907. Bailey soon became a retail center and opened up a section of the country that was sparsely settled. Supply stores, a livery stable, cotton gins, and growing tobacco were all major factors in the early years of Bailey. The early years saw the building of churches, a school, warehouses, and many stores. Six trains passed through the town every day. has also provided military volunteers for every major U.S. war from World War I to today. No eastern North Carolina town would be complete without a tradition of barbecue. Cooking an entire pig is still a cause for people to get together as much today as it has been in the past. Tobacco has been vital to the economy of Bailey. Many of the first stores were set up to accommodate growers and the business they created. Farmers' supply stores, warehouses, 
Even the bank depended on income generated by tobacco. And we would uh, burn tobacco from early in the morning until late in the afternoon. And then we had to hang the tobacco in the barn. We had to help hang it. We would carry it where it was racked up to the barn and, and the guys would be up high in the barn they would hang the tobacco. In the early 1920s, the Bailey market set the highest price per pound on tobacco in the U.S. up until that time. So, anything happened in the neighborhood, good or bad, it didn't take long for it to come through the barber shop. My name is Bruce Griffin. I've lived here for 46 years. I run the barber shop in Bailey, 52 years. My father cut hair. He didn't have license, but he was a country barber. He says hair grows all the time and they got to get it cut. And that's why I said I wish he'd have lived till I it. But when the Beatles came to California, 1965, they had supposedly long, it won't long to what it gotten to be. But, and uh, it took till 71 for it to get to, to the Eastern Shore. <laughs> and, and from then, for about a year, and probably might be more than a year, people didn't get a haircut because they had to wait for it to get long as they wanted it. Once it all got long, then it started getting a trim a little, started coming back. I just thank everybody for the customers I had and how nice people treated me. Uh, that's, that's, you know, I paid a living. I couldn't have done it without Bailey people. Well, the first parade started with the little children, uh, Helen Murray and my daughter, and uh, Ashley's sister, Kay. They started off with pulling their carts with their doll babies, and then they went to uh, horses. All of, three of them got horses. Uh, started on the 4th of July, just uh, parading, the, bringing the dolls in the wagons. That's what they had. And they just went downtown and back. And then they went to the bicycles. That was next. After that, they all got bicycles. And they, they were in the parade. And, that's, and they just decorated the bicycles. Um, as I grew older, uh, around the 4th of July, um, when I was 11 years old, my mom spoke to me about, let's get together and have a 4th of July parade. And she said, I'm going to put you in charge of that, Helen. And you can do that. Um, you can get the people together. So I got bicycles and people with horses. Um, Kay folds some bits and made many of our friends rode in that parade and we had a lot of fun. Um, we had, it grew and grew and we, I had, I, I got that together for nine years. It was really enjoyable. We began to have floats and uh, we had the mayor in it and many cheerleading groups and bands and the Dunn Clown. The last year we had a parade was in 1967, 
That was a wonderful year for the parade because we had Seymour Johnson sent three planes over. I talked them into that. I'll never know how I did it. I guess they thought I was older than 19 years old. But it was not, I worked with them many days on getting that done and I, everybody said, you're gonna make that happen? And I said, it will happen, it will happen. We got to believe it will. So after the, at the very um, beginning of the parade, those, those uh, aircraft, three of them came over Bailey and we were quite thrilled. We had the Dunn clowns out of Dunn and that year the, cha the chamber or the group of merchants raised enough money to have the um, Miss North Carolina, which was quite exciting. Mayor Groves Barnes was the mayor that year. We had a big podium up in front of the town hall. It was much like a, um, a long truck, it was like a flatbed truck, and it was great. We put, covered it with white paper and we had um, all the dignitaries of Nash County and Bailey that we could load up on there. And also the Bailey Town Commissioners, Mr. Groves Barnes as mayor. We had a great time during that time and that was really exciting. Um, and many of my neighbors helped me get that started. Della Sanders lived beside me at that time and she helped a lot. Her son Nima Sanders was a little bitty thing as well as Dick Privet who was my little cousin and they really enjoyed it because they were in on getting it together and just making it happen. It was a lot of fun and a big crowd came to Bailey. Um, we had right many newspapers that covered it. We even had it on TV. In 1947, a train on the Highway 581 overpass derailed. Many residents still remember this and will not drive under the overpass if a train is crossing. In 1980, the U.S. Smithsonian Institute sponsored a traveling show to commemorate the old-style medicine shows of the early 1900s. Bailey was a stop on that tour and the whole town rallied behind the music, shows, acts, and recreated traditions of those old shows. Many live performances included names like Snuffy Jenkins and Poppy Sherrill. Many of the musical performances were designed to show the progression of old time music to bluegrass in the early 20th century. Also headlining was Roy Acuff. The Boy Scouts have always enjoyed a home in Bailey. and also enjoy camping at nearby Camp Charles.
Today, Bailey still has many attractions. Finch Pottery has been bringing people to town for years. The former produce farm has focused its efforts on making pottery and teaching others the art. Pottery workshops are a draw for residents and visitors alike. The Country Doctor Museum is an historical site dedicated to honor the work done by rural physicians for generations. Founded in 1967, the museum is home to a collection of artifacts from a time when house calls were the norm. The grounds, which have grown to include three buildings and a recreated herb garden, houses equipment, uniforms, and memorabilia from many fields of rural medicine including nursing, pharmacy, and dentistry. In 2003, the museum was donated to the Medical Foundation of East Carolina University. The collection is a draw for tourists, healthcare professionals, and students and reminds visitors of advancements in healthcare. She and I would take a lot of trips down the main street of Bailey in the mornings and we would stop at different stores and go to the post office and to Kali Cafe and um, maybe the dry cleaners and buy one of the grocery stores. My uncle had a business here and the name of that was um, WB Privet and Company and I would stop there some mornings and visit with him and Drexel Rhodes who worked at that store. Um, I had a lot of fun doing that. I would go to the post office and sit up in the window at the post office and visit with Mr. Jack Colley who was the postmaster at that time. You didn't go to one store and buy everything you needed. You. Um, went to the hardware store if you needed hardware, or you went to the florist, um, you went to the fabric store, or the dime store, or the barber shop, or the grocery store, or the car parts store, and oh, I could get anything I needed by starting at one end of town and going to the next and could walk much of that way. It was just a quaint place. Whenever you uh, went in a store, people knew who you were, and they were willing to help you. Um, you didn't have to look for someone. They were anxious to help you and help you figure out what you needed. Going in here, Farmer Brothers, and he always had lures and stuff down here too. And walking through these floors that always creaked in the big cash, uh, cash register up there, that, that was always fun because I remember hearing my daddy tell stories about this place. Everything used to come from here, and uh, and it was always fun because. There were things here you hadn't seen anywhere else, and you could walk through and out buy anything you needed at this place. When my husband worked, we were married in 1935 to TC, I was married to TC May. He worked for Farmer Brothers, the oldest establishment in Bailey. And in this place, they sold coal, farm equipment, uh, staple groceries, uh, shoes, men's pants, paint, stores, refrigerators, and hardware. And he worked there for 43 years. And I taught school. I taught seventh grade for six years when I came here. Then I went to the fifth grade and taught 29 years. So I taught 35 years in the schools of Nash County. And I remember uh, walking, walking my children uh, from from my house down to the Bailey Elementary, and that was always real nice because that's where I grew up, and I knew that was going to be a nice place to bring my children to. And uh, always knowing they were right there, and 
and the teachers and the and the assistant teachers and everything, they always did real well making sure they made the parents feel comfortable dropping their kids off. And uh, that's small town. That's not something you see. I have a lot of friends that live in places that moved away and, and live in bigger places and even somewhere as small as Cary or Raleigh, but it still is nothing like this. I know that if something happened, some of my child were to get out here and, and we're in a few years driving. <laughs> um, when she starts driving and she breaks down, I know somebody from Bailey, they see her, they'll stop and take care of her. Uh, that's the type of that's the type of place we come from. Somewhere where everybody just, that's, I, I think that's the thing that everybody should know about Bailey. It's a place that takes care of the people who live there and take care of each other. And uh, that's the most important thing of a town, that, that everybody takes care of each other. And uh, it's like a big family. And uh, not just, it's not just the friends you see every day, but it's, it's, it's everybody that, that lives in town. If they find out that you need something, people come out of the woodwork to help you. And that's always a good feeling. Um, my granddaddy gave the land for the Wesley Privet Memorial Library, actually James Wesley Privet Memorial Library, that we have here and it's still there by the town hall. I started off with uh, $37. I had $37 in my pocket and I was picking cotton. And I tried to pick a better way of making a living than picking cotton. So I sit down on the ground and sand and try to figure out how to make money besides picking cotton. I was on a bicycle, so I got on my bicycle, come to Bailey, called the bus. I forgot what it cost, like 25, 30 cents. Went to Wilson, got me a drink box. I paid about $15, I think, in the drink box. And the other 15, 16, I bought candy booty. And went wrong before I had a store full of stuff. Oh, I can remember, and it hasn't been that long ago, when we had corn growing on Main Street, growing on, in a field on Main Street. And the corn is, the field was where now the Country Doctors Museum parking lot is. But immediately before that was a parking lot, someone was farming that land. Um, it's across from Mr. Graham Farmer's house. So I remember corn and also chickens on Main Street, walking up and down. I just thought it was the coolest thing that we had chickens on Main Street. Um, I think back for the many, many people that worked in Bailey that were here long before me, they made it happen. Um, they started, they, they built the town hall, they built the many businesses. Um, so many people contributed a lot to Bailey to make it as it is today, and there's still a lot of things to be done. Bailey is, is a grand place to live. Uh, it, it has a big heart. People will take you in and they'll help you whenever there's a problem. Um, it's just wonderful.